um, with some. I'm just, I'm just, of, I just don't want to miss any, any good stuff, Eric, so I apologize. I'm just, I'm just going to record the yeah. news because great stuff is going to come with the people that are, are jumping in already. So I don't mean to have interrupted you right there, but if you want to carry on. Yeah, so I've, I've studied law for about 20 years. I've uh, classically studied in um, patent trade law and then got uh, into the UCC uh, quite heavily and uh, founding father's law. As you can see by my post, this is a declaration, not the Declaration of Independence like the fake one is. This is, this is the actual A declaration. Um, that the founding fathers wrote, and it's in the style if you do the forensics, and I have several copies of it uh, on PDF. There are 26 that are still left because 200 were authorized by Congress to be sent out to a candid world. And if you notice at the bottom of this one, uh, John Hancock never signs because the secretary um, has permission for uh, to sign for the executive authority. So it was signed by the executive authority secretary at the time. Um, and so then I've got a background in common law and uh, just all around, you know, feel for, um, uh, for, uh, uh, all all uh, venues of law, you know, from special maritime admiralty to common law to, um, you know, what most people want to uh, um, want to talk about. And 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 I think it's one of the most misunderstood is equity, because, it, you know, the principles of equity says that it follows the law. So there is no such thing as exclusive equity. Sorry. An exclusive equity would be. Would be without law, with, without special maritime, without common law. So you have to use common law or some sort of law forum. To and get to how, equity. And how does what relate to Magna Carta? Well, now, Magna Carta is really interesting because people want to talk about the Magna Carta, but they can't cite their authority. And I can. In Washington, D.C., uh, District of Columbia uh, took on the Magna Carta and accepted it into their code. So you could use the Magna Carta in District of Columbia or in a court of District of Columbia. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm just picking up the detail to put the puzzle together if I can eventually at some point. I don't know. Yeah, so Magna Carta was accepted by the District of Columbia through the DC code. And so it's the only place that I found that it exists. So, so my name's Eric and, and you know, my nickname is Cite Your Authority because whenever anybody speaks, you know, as soon as they're done, I'm like, okay, yeah, Cite Your Authority. Yeah, give me the law. Give me the law, not your opinion because I could go stand in a crowd and get as many opinions in five minutes as I can on a Zoom call. I'm getting more. But do they have force and effect in my life? No. So if I'm going to get an opinion, I perhaps might want one that has force and effect. One that I could cite, one that I could quote even, one that I could use in my instruments. And so it's really- you mean remedies. Well, remedy for relief. So you gotta be careful when you say the word remedy because that's a methodology, but what do you wanna do with a method? You wanna get somewhere called relief. So you're actually seeking relief and my remedy would be an equitable remedy if it's up to me because most people just ask for a remedy. And of course, you know, do you wanna get slapped by my right hand or my left hand? When you, when you give it up to the judge, they're going to slap you with both hands. So if you if you ask for a remedy for relief that is an equitable remedy for relief, then you are better off. You're better off because you probably might head you know in that direction towards equity, depending on how you present yourself. Because you have to bring equity to get equity. So you have to be very explicit in nature. Interesting. I'm just, I have only interest in law. My trade is engineer, so. Sorry. The devil is in the detail, and that is where we really need to understand our definitions, because a single word can make or break the case that we are advocating for ourselves in, and ultimately, if we don't know how to advocate for ourselves, we certainly aren't going to be able to seek remedy, because we won't know how to use the tools or the instruments. And so, uh, thank you, everyone, for investing your valuable time today in coming together with all of the phenomenal people who are here that understand that there is a lot going on in bad faith in today's world and i use that definition because i sent out a blog post to those who are subscribed to my uh, messages where i say that self-promoter self-promoting maybe but ultimately it is to say that i am hosting this and will be hosting other meetings and that's a direct way for you to be able to receive updates about what i'm doing and all of what i do is really in good faith to the best of my ability which is another definition that i feel is significant because ultimately it's a state of mind consisting in honesty and belief or purpose faithfulness to one's duty or obligation observance of reasonable commercial standards of fair dealing in a given trade or business, or absence of intent to defraud or to seek unconscionable advantage. And the opposite to that would then be bad faith, which is exactly what is happening right now, I believe. And you who have joined, I am sure are in agreement to this because ultimately we all see what is happening and it's just not okay. And I've got some phenomenal people on this call that I look forward to having you bring forward uh, your insights and your questions and whatever is going to best allow us to
understand who are the players on the field that are willing to stand up, that are willing to put forward your word and to stand behind it and to know who you stand with. And so before we get into we who are standing in good faith, I'll read the definition for bad faith in case it's of interest to anyone. And it is from Black's Law Dictionary as well, which is dishonesty of belief or purpose, also termed malafides. So I share that and we've got another, another one coming in. And so in terms of really getting the most out of today's meeting, it would be useful to get an understanding as to where people are most struggling or what the, per what the reason that you chose to invest your time into coming today would be. This is the second meeting that we've been hosting, which is really a gathering of resources to be able to really do what is required. There are many who are leading movements. Um, Eric already was sharing what he's doing and we've got some others who are doing phenomenal things as well. So I don't want to dominate this call. I really want it to be a mastermind where we are able to gather for like purpose, which is ultimately the elevation of all of us together. So that being said, would there be someone who would like to speak next? Well, I spoke and if this is something we're talking about law, I am with minimal knowledge trying to learn. And anyone who has good understanding may speak, we need to learn. Yeah. Peace. My name is Dwayne, and I am here, you know, to cite my authority, um, to learn as much as I can, to listen and to build, and to learn how to do equity, as well as speak equity. In terms of equity, and how does that relate to common law specifically? Um, just, I, I don't know that, that terminology is um, out of, I, I've been dealing with the summons in truth and uh, for speaking out. And so I, I kind of shared last week, but um, for you who are new, which the majority of the people on today, um, you weren't there and I didn't post the recording because I wanted to, uh, I, we're, we're juggling a hard balance right now with sharing who are on the field and ultimately also making it so that those who can't attend the meetings are able to get information too. So I didn't post that though it was incredibly valuable. Um, but how I'm, I'm dealing with my summons is through a notice process and ultimately I've learned a tremendous amount around common law, which I feel is where we really have to really be clear in that I feel that's the jurisdiction where we have the most power because ultimately as, an, as a woman and as men, we ultimately are, are needing to really be able to represent who we are as as men and women, and that puts us above the jurisdiction of the courts, which maybe I, if others have something to say, I'm not the most informed. Rebecca, I'm, thank you for taking the <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca, and um, I'm one of the co-founders for Stand for Thee, based out of Toronto. And um, so going back, going to what you're saying, Laura, with, with common law, and the one thing that I think people get caught up with in common law is that our courts are actually based on common law. So they are based on, on common law. They've been, I, I wouldn't even say compromised because I don't believe our courts are compromised. And the reason, corrupted, yes. The reason why I'm challenged with the idea of being compromised is because they closed the lower courts in Ontario. And if they closed the courts, that means that there's an opportunity for us to win our battles in that courtroom. If there wasn't, they would have left them open so that we could have gone into the courtrooms and we could have been shut down. And we've seen some cases going through where they're having success. So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm with you on what you're saying, Laura, in terms of um, the jurisdiction and the legal framework and the legalese that we've all been living under for who knows how long. Um, I, I think I look at it a little bit differently because I also feel like I don't need to ask for my rights. I don't need to I don't need to do any steps to get my rights because that implies that they've been taken from me. I think for me, what I see is a good solution is reclaiming those courts back to their original intention. And that starts with taking the process of, for me, going into the courtroom and bringing back that original framework of the courts. Um, and I guess, like, I'm not even sure if common law is the right term for this, but, you know, it's like, it, it, I guess inalienable rights is, it is that, but that's the vernacular that we use as common law. Um, and uh, it's definitely the tool that we're going to have to use to dismantle the, um, the, the corruption that has taken place in the system over, again, I'm not sure how long it's been going on for. So I feel like it's a little more of a balance between using the existing framework that we have to bring it back to its original intention. Yes, Sorry. yes. Also, uh, with, with, just, just to say as well, though, our, our, we have never claimed our rights. We, we don't need to. We've assumed we that we've claimed them. I don't, I don't feel like I need to claim my rights. I don't need to claim them. No one's taken them from me. There's this, 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 this belief that they've been taken from me, and that's where I believe we give our power away. Because we're implying that someone took them. We just have to know that we have our rights. We have, we've always had our rights. And this is just a game that we have to play. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm being less literal about it, and I'm being more, um, more in the stance that uh, nobody can take our rights away. They can put legalese on top of them and hide them, rather than taking them away. Can I right? comment, please? Wait. Oh, sorry, I yield. No, go ahead, Eric. I was just going to say, I was, I was going to follow up on equity um, yeah so, so go ahead. okay so first of all first of all let, let's get over let's get through the wordplay so there are three forums in law there's special maritime admiralty there's common law and there's equity and they're all been bunched up into one court the court of chancellery is is carries the equitable portion you will find all of them in one courtroom though 
period. Now, common law, the definition of common law, might want to write this down, guys, in the chat. If I've got any of uh, my team members out there, Georgie, write this stuff in the chat because this is important for people to know because they don't read enough. The definition of common law is called jurisprudence. And then the next definition in common law in the law is called precedence because it's the precedented cases that give you common law. The same law that allows women to abort their babies and murder children is the same law that I get to beat my wife with a stick the size of my thumb. So common law is a tricky place because you might get beat with a stick because common law, you're, you're only as good as your cited authority in common law. And if you get a case law that you don't comprehend and you start citing a case law that you think you know what was decided and how you know is because there's one mechanism. It's called the trier of the facts. And then the trier of the facts, whether it be the judge, which it is, or by a fake jury, because the judge can always override a jury, uh, override a jury's decision. So the trier of the fact is the judge, but it's the facts to be tried. So what facts you try in a case is what gives you jurisprudence, what gives you that precedent. Yes, so, uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry about that, Eric. Keep going. It's all right. I'll, I'll take one too. <laughs> uh, so it's really important to comprehend. And then the next thing I want to address here is, you know, I don't mind singing Kumbaya and holding hands, but we're not playing a fluff game in the court. And you damn straight, you need to cite your authority when it comes to your rights. Because you were born on a ship sailing and you got a stamp on it called a number and an uppercase name as inventory because your parents were invalid because they didn't know how to claim it, because they were slaves also. But you can get off the slave ship, but the first thing you do, need to do is you need to get interest into that authority. What I mean by that is, is in patent trade office authority, that the only way to get interest into it is by notice. And you're looking to establish a co-beneficiary status at minimum. And you do that through the style of law called notice. And notice needs to be done in a particular style. The word notice must show up. It should be centered at the top of the page. It needs to be large, in bold text, and in all caps. If you read the, the GPO style manual or the style manual in Chicago styles. So it's very important. So the first step, guys, and the reason why is because you are in trust somewhere. Your name is in trust. That's why it's all cap. It, it usually means in trust. You know, it showed up as a, as a legal fiction um, uh, style, whether it's a legal fiction or not. And so what happens is that your rights are in trust. So one of the first steps out, out getting something out of a trust is giving notice. You can't sue anybody. You can't make a federal lawsuit until you notice everybody that you're going to sue them. Because in equity, guys, you have to give warning. You give a shot over the bow of a ship. You just don't shoot the ship. It's not equitable. You give notice to what you do. And the reason why is because this is where you get to state a remedy for relief before the adjudication process. Excuse me, I'll interrupt you here just a sec. To whom we give this notice? I followed you so far. To whom the notice is addressed and how? So it's very explicit to who you're doing business with or who you're soliciting to do business with. I hear you. Say thanks. Okay. Eric, I uploaded the uh, DC Styles Manual for them, and I gave them the 20 maxims of equity in the chat. Yeah, and get the must-have uh, equity of the uh, treaties, please. Okay, one second. Oh, no, no. Thank you. So, guys, um, I'm with Cite Your Authority, so I do have some team members out there that play um, with me in, in the real world. And I call for all my Cite Your Authority team members to be active um, when we're in other calls. And what we like to do is take notes. We do it live. We provide uh, reading material and authorities. So that when I speak, I'm uh, someone usually in the background or, or I am giving you the information out there that is there because I'm not an attorney. I don't give legal advice. But what I do is I can hand you over all my research data and show you exactly where it says it in the law. And I think it's the most critical way uh, to communicate is with uh, facts. I yield. Well done. Bet it's uploaded, Eric. I was just going to ask about your experience in the court system and, and what you've, like, have, have you went into court and won anything? with? Absolutely. So... I've won, I've won several, three or more uh, federal cases. I've won from a federal parking ticket to, um, I was charged with Fort Patriot Act offenses, um, and I won that case. And then I also protected, you know, $100 million worth of assets on, on a trademark uh, in federal court. And then I've won also in lower courts, and I've also lost in lower courts, but I've never lost in federal court. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. That was excellent insights. And anybody, so with, with the notice, I'm, I'm my, um, my, my summons date is for June 11th, so I've been working a lot on this, and I was speaking with um, Doug Force, actually, with a C-E, not a D, and um, he has the myth as Canada, and what he was saying um, is that because I sent in the notices, which I'd never heard about the CAPS uh, notice being needing, in, needing to be in CAPS, so I'll ask a question about that after, um, but um, basically, he was saying that because I have uh, sent forward these notices, they'll automatic, the courts will automatically deem me as a Meads versus Meads, which means that they'll use that precedence to make it so that as soon as I'm deemed that they don't listen any longer uh, or take down anything that I have to say so 
I'm, I'm on a deep dive to better understand Meads versus Meads and that that case law. And uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll be doing that this weekend and uh, I'll have more information for next Thursday when we'll gather again. Um, so this whole process really is learn as you go, really, unless you've had the luxury of having longer to uh, get insights. Um, but in terms of the notice needing to be in caps, that's because it's, if you're accessing the trust or your rights from your trust, is that my understanding? Okay. Okay, yeah, so let me clear this up. So no, that's not uh, that's not correct. So let's back up. <clears throat> so uh, needs versus needs. So the way the way I uh, work this out is I'll go into a Google chat or a Google search bar. And the reason why Google is because you will find the law in Google. Uh, Bing, you probably might not find everything that I find. Uh, DuckDuckGo, you're, you need to go to Google. You type, you type whatever you type, hit the space bar, and then type in PDF. Anytime you're doing a search, I want you to search with the, the letters PDF after anything. And the reason why is it will blank out and give you explicitly more law than you've ever seen in your life. If you if you don't include the PDF search, um, you know, in, in the word, in the search phrase PDF, you're not going to find these things as easily. So the next step is the styles manual. So first of all, in the United States code, the United States code is a standing code. And um, I, I have uh, Canucks on the team also in Cite Your Authority. So we do a lot of work in Canada um, on, on the knowledge-based uh, learning because it's all connected. Um, because of treaties and from land acquisitions uh, and land grants and land patents, but we'll get into that later. But what, what the reality is, is that United States code, it's called restated. You might want to write that word down. So all United States code is restated into the new style. And there's two types of words, style, S-T-Y-L-E and S-T-I-L-E, just to let you know. Um, so you need to know both. And just like you need to know the word endorse with an I and the word endorse with an E. And so what happens is in the, in the styles manuals, um, there's an accepted format. Now, if you want to talk to a dog, you might want to consider barking. If you want to talk to a cow, you might want to consider mooing. You want to have force and effect on a judge, you put something in front of him that has style that he can recognize. And not only he can recognize, shall, must recognize. So when you put things in style in, in, this, in this new methodology that, that they're constantly upgrading, the court has to recognize it because otherwise they can say that it was unintelligible. And it's a real easy way for them to get out of it. So in the styles manuals, whether it be the GPO or the Chicago, uh, uh, the way it's written in law is that the notice, the word notice, and the whole notice phrase needs to be in all caps. It needs to be bold. It needs to be larger than the body text. And it can be, but does not need to be underlined. So it has to do with the style of law in all forums of law, whether it be special maritime admiralty, common law, or equity. Does that make sense? Did that answer your question? Yeah. I yield. Right. Thank you. Anyone else have a contribution question? Oh, Eric, if I might, on their notice, the statement that you usually give at the beginning that greets the people not to embarrass, dishonor, or um, when you give the, when you give your notice yep. to have so, your opening statement. Yeah, absolutely. So in every instrument that I write right after the capitalized notice, the first line that I put, it's always uh, not to embarrass or dishonor, comma, and then I start my work. Because first of all, you need to set your intention. And when you set an intention of, of equity, you have a better chance of receiving equity. And it's very equitable to say that you're there not to embarrass nor dishonor. And that means that if you make a mistake, UCC 1-103, you can claim a mistake. And they will let you claim the mistake because it was not your intention to dishonor or embarrass the instrument, the adjudication process, or yourself. Are you? I thought there was one more word that you had there too. Nope, that's usually the two. You, you, you know, you can add more, but you know, I'm, I'm more of simplicity of mm -hmm. the exactness, and I, I like not to embarrass or dishonor. That's, a, that's how I do my instruments. Okay, because I, I think I added demean, not to demean, embarrass or dishonor. Or should I take out demean? Yeah, I don't use the word demean. Okay. No. And again, the reason why is because every time you write a word, you need to defend mm -hmm. it. So, okay. your authority. Where did the word demean come from? Because I'll show you where embarrass came from. I'll show you where dishonor comes from. And okay. you know, then, then my the mistake. Next that was my mistake because I was going to add it, but I, went, I haven't written it, the statement since we've done it yet because I haven't done yep. a notice. So yeah, and then, you know, sure the next, then the next portion of the body of the instrument, you can get into that you come forth with clean hands, you know, and establish yourself equitably, you know, immediately in your first sentence. Go ahead, Laura. I yield. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have included in my notices, I believe and affirm and testify that all within this notice is true and done in good faith as I know it. So it's not at the beginning with the words specifically the way that you've stated. Um, yep. So if you want to learn something about endorsements, uh, go to 28 United States Code 1746. And it's also in the Civil Rules of Procedure under um, declarations, under sworn declarations. So you'll find it in your local state code and under the Civil P Rules of Procedure and under the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure and under 28 United States Code 1746. It's called unsworn declarations. So I and many other 
others on the call are Canadian. Um, so I don't specifically. Yeah, let's call America. Call Great Britain. Yeah, that's called America. Yeah, all of it is. <laughs> yeah, and there's reason why, he's got, guys, and we don't have enough time on this call for me to break it down for you with, with the cit citations of authority. Um, but I promise you where you're headed is, you know, exactly where I'm pointing you, whether you want it or not, because I'm not, this has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with the citations of authority that I have read that are in the law. And I can walk, walk yourselves through it. And it's very amazing how it's happened. So I, I know exactly where you're coming from, Michael, because you're in the UK. And I know where Laura is, because and it's a little bit different in the provinces, but uh, not, not as much difference uh, to actually change what I'm saying. Just procedural, a little bit of procedural issue. Well, every province, oh, yeah. every province is a sovereign and the country itself is said to be sovereign and it's also confusing and it, that's part of the reason that the truth is stranger than fiction when we actually- uh, So here's, here's the problem is that if I, if the sovereign acquires land, whether it's war, no matter what, whether it's eminent domain, whether it was given in a treaty, uh, there are still, there is uh, the requisite rights, the requisite filing that there are possible rights that go along with the land use. And there are possibly a uh, reservation of rights so that uh, if the land is never uh, is not used for its purpose, it can be retroceded back so that the sovereign can actually lose its land. So I don't care what the government claims. It's what land and what agreement the land was given. And in Canada, as we know, guys, from Cite Your Authority, uh, a lot of those purchases were through America um, or United States of America purchases that extended all the way to the water boundary waters um, in the North Pole. Are you? Well, thank you for your insights, Eric. And I want to make sure that people who are showing up today also feel confident to use what is being shared. And it, sometimes we get into the, the devil of the details, which is important, and yet also making sure that we feel comfortable to actually take the steps to move forward. So um, if anyone who hasn't yet had an opportunity to share or to um, speak, I would love for you to be able to do so so that we can really make these meetings an opportunity where everyone feels not only heard and and able to contribute, um, but that is actually able to do so. And sometimes that's a difficult piece, which is part of the reason that I felt these meetings were important to actually make it so that we feel empowered enough to speak because, and, and, and not speaking when we don't have something to say is also very powerful. <laughs> so well, I acknowledge well, that. Well, one of the things I'd like to share with Cite Your Authority is, is that because we have the Canucks in the class, when we were looking over some of the founding documents, like um, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, we came upon the Northwest Ordinance, and we found that Canada was linked to the United States because it's specifically mentioned in the Northwest Ordinance. So we, once we found that, we began to find other evidences that Canada has been included in some of America's founding documents. There's a joinder there. So um, it was very interesting to find that out because we always think of them as separate, but the Northwest Ordinance specifically says Canada. So that is something you might want to look at. Let's see if I have a copy of it. Let's see, hold on. There was a gentleman that actually has been uh, studying the BNA Act and he's native. And so he opened my eyes in a lot of ways and was, and, and was sharing the fact that um, Canada was put as a colony. I don't have the information. I, I can't reframe it the way um, that he shared it with me because it's it's all very new and I'm doing my best to piece it together, but he was saying about Canada was listed as a colony of Britain in order to ensure that uh, America couldn't attack it and then, and then take it in. So that would make, that would make sense, but um, I'm, I'm, I didn't get it in deep enough for me to be able to uh, make this useful. Um, Rebecca, did you have something that you wanted to speak into the space? Did you find no, it? I'm just, I'm just listening right now. I'm just listening right now. Thank you. Yeah, no, perfect. Uh, I, I can ask a question, right? I'll mean, Golda. I was listening to this um, statement was made about America purchased the Canadian land, but I didn't quite understand how, when, who has that document, where, like, where's the treaty? How do we know that happened? That's how a great question. How do we know question. the Canadian land is Absolutely. American? All we guess. know during their war, all the loyalists just ran over north to Canada and settled. That much we know. I know. I don't know the rest. I've included a link for the Northwest Ordinance. Um, <laughs> in the chat. It's the transcript of it. Oh yeah, okay, thank you. I'll have a look at it. And one more thing I want to say, I, I'm also collector of all these documents, do research on common law and all that, and I have piled documents in my files. I have one uh, about writing that notice, procedure writing notice, if you want me, I can, I can post it here. So guys, I want to I wanna point you towards the OLRC, the United States Code, I dropped the link. Um, if you guys uh, jump on that link, 
um, and you go to the link, you'll see the very, um, it'll say browse for United States code um, right under the search boxes. And if you click on front matter, F-R-O-N-T, matter, M-A-T-T-E-R, um, this is going to be uh, the organic laws. And these are very important because this, you know, the organic laws happened before the United States code happened. So I want you to be aware of, you know, the wonderful resources that United States have. And, you know, when you speak to a guru, a real guru, the, the one thing they'll tell you is the best place to do research in the world is United States. We have got so many archives. And since our involvement with the Queen, uh, we've got all the archives of Canada, all the archives of New Zealand. We've got, we've got so many archives. It's, it's ridiculous. So take advantage of United States archives um, and uh, also take advantage of National Archives uh, for Canada. And um, you'll actually find a declaration. Uh, you see the post of Cite Your Authority with a declaration in the parchment paper. Uh, but a declaration was also uh, entered into the Canadian um, uh, National Archives. So very, very important to know where you can get this knowledge from so that it's not your opinion, so that it's a legal opinion and or fact. I yield. Fantastic. So this is a very different meeting from last time. And that's fantastic because every time we come together, we get better when we have people that have access to more information. And as much as information and leads to knowledge, it's about using that knowledge. So really figuring out how to be able to move forward with confidence and understanding that has become our own through application is really fundamental in this whole process and part of how we really feel empowered to move forward. David, Michael, you seem familiar and I, I wonder if you have anything, you've been, you've been sitting quietly and um, listening. So I wonder if you've got anything to, to share. Um, yeah, well, I was in our, a couple of our Sunday meetings and I've done some interviews, so um, I've been the one sharing the secrets about the quantum stuff uh, that wasn't shared with that community. Um, uh, but no, basically, yeah, just laid back right now, just listening, taking in, you know, the words of other people at the moment. Uh, when I have something, you know, I will jump in um, and let you guys know. I'm pretty good when it comes to interrupting someone <laughs> casually, sure. not, not in an ignorant way, but you know what I mean? Um, but yes, um, when I have something, I'll let you know. That's perfect. And it's difficult to feel put on the spot because then you're forcing rather than letting it come from the organic place of letting it flow through you. So I understand that asking people to... Right to speak up or to step up in a moment that is not in the flow is not necessarily helpful. What a lot of people don't know is like the actual name of the United, the United States is actually the United States of North America and the several states and territories. It's not actually the United States of America. So it actually has North America in the whole, in the title, which I guess would include Canada. So right? is this David speaking, David? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, David. So this, my name's Eric. So the, so this makes me jump to the edge of my seat and say, cite your authority. Where can we find that brother, David? Uh, the American, um, the American citizens manual of reference, 1840. Okay. Yeah. Can you drop that for us? Uh, no, I have the physical books. Um, would you drop the exact title and the year of publishing, please? And I will give it. Absolutely. Wonderful. Because yeah, you when you say print. something smart like that, we need to capture that moment. Yeah. You can get the yeah. reprint. You can get the reprint on Amazon for only like 10 or 14 bucks. Yep. So here's another thing, Laura and the crowd. I want to teach you another thing. Is it's a pertinent, it's the number one tool I use every day. And it's called Adobe PDF uh, Pro. And I get the subscription to it every month. So I've got the best PDF viewer uh, so I can manipulate. And the reason why I say this is because if you get one of my portfolios or if you get the download of all the United States code, 
in one PDF, you can use the advanced search function under the edit tab. So if you click on edit, scroll down to advanced search, you can search an entire portfolio for one word and you can find all the instances. So whether it's not, whether it's Black's Law Dictionary or Levine's or uh, any, you know, any portfolio, you can either search one PDF or the whole portfolio of PDFs for one particular word that has force and effect. And like I tell my students, if you learn 50 words that I give you, those 50 words are going to always be in the law that has force and effect. And when you can start comprehending those exact words, you can find what you're looking for, no matter where you're looking. Does that make sense, Lord? Have you heard of uh, uh, DC Pro, the Adobe PDF? Not specifically. Yeah, it's the most powerful tool. Yeah, if you don't have it, you know, because the, the one of the biggest problems that we face is time. And I know you seem uh, pretty young yourself, but I can guarantee you, you don't have enough time um, without those tools. You just don't. And, and that's how I keep up with class, you know, 50 to 100 people is because I've got these dedicated tools and I, on the fly, I can look up and search by archive when someone says, hey, cite your authority, Eric. I can cite it just right here and right now, drop the PDF or drop the phrase, you know, within within seconds to a minute. So if you're going to play this game um, to win, you might want to consider that tool. I yield. So... When we get all of this information and then it's just kind of like the, the mind exploding piece and then it's figuring out how to actually move forward, I feel like that's one of the biggest pieces that we're all kind of coming together because we understand is what needs to happen. And so I got a tractor going by, so I'm going to let somebody else say something if you have it. Guys, whenever we think about taking a step, I want you to think about perfecting a step. Yes. Period. Because you can't hop anywhere fast, guys. You can what hop, what, 20 hops before you fall over? 30 hops? But you can perfect each and every single step and make it anywhere you're headed. So the first step for anything, what is it, Laura? George, come on, guys. What's that? What's the question? What's I'm the, sorry. What's the first step? No matter where, no matter what direction, what's the first step? Know where you're going. Ah, uh, uh, that's not bad. How about notice? <laughs> yeah, it's a notice. Yeah, you want you want to put on a blinker because even if you're lost, you should use your signals, right? That's true. There you go. I yield. And that's giving equity too by using your signal. One thing about that American Citizens Manual of Reference, it has the original Article 13 in there. Oh, yes. The uh, titles of nobility? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. What was the comment about the titles of nobility? The, uh, the American Citizens Manual of Reference I shared with you, it has the original yes. Article 13 in there. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, in my research... Um, uh, my buddy Bill and I, we uh, actually um, were some of the old school guys who, uh, before it was called quantum grammar, it was called cru truth, truth grammar. And so I have instruments that we color coded uh, red, black, and blue, and which contains all of the founding fathers' works. And we also got the Virginia 13th because Virginia printed it in their textbooks. Um, and uh and it uh, lasted in the archives and i'll try to get you that work i think i i posted in the chat uh the color coded um one of them might say whatever it says color coded um but the nice thing about that those instruments is that this is a collection of all uh the founding fathers works uh that was enacted into law in one searchable pdf and if you're familiar with what a concordance is, is we wrote a concordance on the founding fathers' instruments. 
So every word, every word phrase, every word sentence, every paragraph, you can find out exactly how many times it was used in the Founding Fathers. We did all that work. And it's been a work of art for about 11 years now as we've been perfecting it. And along with that, we color coded uh, 2,200 pages of hand-picked words out of Black's Law Dictionary. Um, I believe it was sixth edition with pronunciations, the red book. Um, and I'll try to get that to you guys um, and please spread it around. Uh, and the reason why is because if you ever have a question, you can go into Adobe and go under the advanced search. Now guys, don't think a find function like a control F is the same algorithm. It is not. The control F will not get you where I want you to be. It will leave out words. It will skip over them. And always know that the AI is, is looking at your material. So when you see one of my crafted PDFs, you'll see that page number one is blank because the AI looks for the first page, looks for the caption, the header to, to store it. And so we fake it out. We fake out the AI uh, by blanking the first page on every instrument. I yield. I like that. Great idea. We'll just stay and stand. I just caught up on the comments there, Rebecca. That's funny. A few of our lost. Yes, a few of us are lost um, going over the head. Yes. So basically, I feel like what's going, what's happening right here is there's a lot of information being shared that's very valuable information, but without the ability to apply it specifically, and I understand about not wanting to hop before you've taken good measured steps. It's very difficult, but in terms of actually empowering us to be able to take action rather than getting into our heads and, and keeping this as information that we then have to go down more rabbit holes for, I feel like what's important is to really have this have this meeting today for being where we can actually figure out how we can actually, what's, what's a practical step that we can take to be able to move forward with greater certainty in our own minds and hearts to know what's going to be something practical we can, we can do. How, are other, how, how do others feel around that? Hey, Brother George, can you drop uh, a declaration, the Declaration of Rights that the class has been working on? Understanding our unalienable rights, absolutely, is fundamental in... Yeah, yeah and even more perfected, comprehending them. Yeah, comprehension is, is number one. Uh, standing is the next thing you want to decide on what you're going to stand on. And, you know, and then comprehending the forums of law, special maritime admiralty, um, and then common law, and then uh, the equity. And, you know, the thing is, and, um, you know, I, I've seen only a couple of people say this publicly, but you have to go through law to get to equity. And if that's what you seek, you're going to have to perfect a form of law, whether it's special maritime or common law, so that you can get out of common law. Because common law, you're going to get beat with a stick the size of my thumb. I promise you. Because A, you're going to piss someone off. B, you might get in the way of someone who really knows their rights. So you have to always approach something, you know, with caution. And common law is a dangerous, dangerous place. And one of the best things to, to learn, um, no matter where you're from, it's called uh, the... DOJ CRM 664. And so what that stands for, uh, and I'll, I'll post it here real quick, is it's Department of Justice Criminal Resource Manual number 664, uh, but also 665 and 666. And what happened was James versus Dravo, or if you're French, Dravo, uh, it set precedents and what it did was 
it actually rewound the clocks and overwrote 150 years of case law on land, on jurisdiction. And so, uh, so it's important to start here um, to start comprehending and all the citations in 664 um, are very important uh, uh, to get underneath your belt. And, you know, I'd start with James versus Dravo. Uh, you have to start with 18 United States Code 7 sub 3. You need to go to 40 uh, USC 255. And another thing I want to teach you guys is just because a law um, has changed, because a lot of people be like, oh, yeah, but that law was blank, blank, blank or whatever. They think that it disappeared. Usually when a law disappears, it's because it's been rewritten in, in, a, in a new style and it's actually become public law. So from the OLRC, United States Code, all United States Code is restyled and restated into P law, P L A W, or what they call public law, or what they call statutes at large. And all statutes at large are, are uh, equitable um, remedy uh, when it comes for uh, entering it as evidence in any court of United States District of Columbia. And then the special, what do they call it? The special print or the special uh, annual report on the CR. Uh, CRF, uh, I think, oh, CFR, pardon me, on the CFR, the special one uh, can be entered in as judicial notice. So very important to understand because the biggest thing that most people are struggling with, from my knowledge, is that they're, they're not having force and effect because they're not getting, um, uh, they're not getting, uh, evidences, adequate evidences, sufficient evidences into court. They don't know how to publish evidence. They don't know how to use the, uh, uh, the judicial um, notice when adding evidences, and they don't even know what a judicial notice is. And so there are certain things that the court must allow as evidences that you don't have to fight over. You don't have to argue any facts. You don't have to try any facts for these evidences and uh it's it's really amazing when you when you figure that out um and use those two tools that i just gave you the cfr the special report of the cfr and the whole year i think it cost sixteen hundred dollars uh from the archive um and uh i'm still waiting back from the librarian to let me know if we can get it in pdf form um certified and signatured electronic signature. So did you have a question? Anybody? I yield. Eric, the PDF that I have of a declaration is coming up blank. Okay, it's in my archive somewhere. Um, I'll just have to, uh, uh, I'll look for it. I'll keep looking. Thanks, George. I yield. Okay. My question would be around if the courts haven't actually responded to the notices that have been sent out, they're act are they not acting in bad faith? No, you are. It's called belligerent. So you're belligerent because uh, you haven't uh, you haven't corrected uh, the interest in your um, in your all caps name, and so a lot of some people might call it the name change. And I think it more importantly to comprehend what, what you're really looking for is that, is that you need to establish interest in a claim so that if you run into adjudication, when they go out onto the public record, your evidences of interest are already established through notice. Does that make sense? Not completely, but I've, uh, I, I've, so in there if there's a bicycle, there. if there's a bicycle, say, you know, Laura, because, you know, bikes, bicycles have names like Laura and Laura wants, you know, there, there's no, the bicycle is just sitting there. But if I came up as Eric and, and I wrote into the record through a notice, legal notice, and we'll go over in Canada, there's specific newspapers that you have to publish in that are legal notice in Canada. 
as they are in the United States. And I could say Eric owns or has interest in the value, intrinsic value of that uh, that bicycle. And I, I and and if no one says, hey, you that's not true, Eric, because I bought it. Here's my receipt. Well, in the future, if the bike is collected by a peace officer and it comes up for auction, it's like, wait a second, no, Eric's got a claim on this and he has interest in it. He's a co-beneficiary. Now, what would make me a beneficiary is if no one else claimed it. Then it wouldn't be co anymore. It would be beneficiary. So how I like to come in is a notice of the intended <laughs> beneficiary and at least perfected the co-beneficiary having interest in the matter, the all caps name or the social security number. So, so that, uh, you know, so that if it's adjudicated and ever brought up in court that you already have a notice out there that you have interest and now you can step into equity with a with a remedy for relief that is called equitable relief <coughs> because why I say equitable relief is because they might give you both an equity remedy and a legal remedy and you might want both you might want the legal remedy to be fully adjudicated say they can give you under the law $300,000, but equitably, they took $4 million from you. So equitably, you could also get more money or more, and it's usually not money, guys, when we're talking equity. It's usually person, place things um, or uh, to stop hurt. But that's just an example that when you're looking for a remedy for relief, you know, are you looking for a legal remedy or are you looking for an equitable remedy? And this is why women are um, a lot of times given more money in divorce cases is because it's usually done by equity without them even knowing. It's been written into the state laws or, or a judge will actually uh, give an a equitable remedy for relief. I yield. And that's why there's no 50-50. Equity does not uh, have... It does not act in halves. It does not divide things in half. If you if you read the Holy Scriptures, you know, with King Saul, you know, that woman gave up her child to save her child and then was awarded her entire child by equity. I yield. In good faith. In good faith with clean hands. With clean hands, yes. Both. You have to stack these together. You have to come, you know, without dishonor, not to embarrass, with clean hands, in good faith. Mm -hmm. I have to run, everybody, but I just want to say thank you. And I managed to get all those documents, so all is good. And um, maybe we'll see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Thanks, Rebecca. Thank I'll you. Email me, you. If, email me if you want uh, you a portfolio. Okay, sounds good. Okay, good night, everyone. Fantastic. And so uh, Rebecca was uh, going off to, there's a call at eight o'clock with uh, doctors and medical professionals who are being panelists for um, what's going on. It's, I, I believe it's Canadian doctors. Uh, I think it's from University of Guelph, in fact, um, who have challenged uh, Ford's administration. So um, that's at eight o'clock and in the meetup link, uh, under Peaceful Inner Warriors United. I did include the link where you can register for that if you haven't already and if you wanted to be part of that. Um, in terms of this meeting specifically, it's been a lot of information. And so I wanna just check in and see if there was if there were any specific questions. Obviously, um, Eric, if you wanna share how people might be able to connect with you so that they can kind of um, get more information the way that you've got um, you've got a wealth of information so if you want to just share that so people can grab that information I just want to check in to see how, where everyone else is at and um, if if there's something that will be beneficial I feel like having practical steps is really important in all of this and um, 
<laughs> the the information overload can not feel as empowering because it's not integrated and it's not ours yet and so um while i appreciate all of the information i <laughs> I, I, I don't feel in this moment it's helpful for me personally, though it is, and it's just, it's it's more work and it's having to, it's got to, it's about figuring it out. So um, I'm just kind of being honest and kind of where, where I'm kind of sitting with this and really wanting, ha having wanted this space to kind of be where people could um, figure out really how to take a stand and advocate and do what's required solutions are what's required here. and i appreciate your sharing information and, and resources to be able to get that and until we have more of a plan to be able to figure out how to make those tools resort or useful it just kind of feels a bit overwhelming so i'm just i'm just honor i'm just speaking into kind of the emotional experience that i'm feeling from uh what's been shared and i i certainly want to make sure that if anyone else is uh showing up and then now feeling more overwhelmed than before because of the abundance of information that was shared um that we have an opportunity to address what's going on uh, i was hoping to hear practical steps to help parents with kids who want to get the job because all the fr their friends are getting it and won't hang out with them unless they join the job club yeah absolutely and that's that's huge um the, i there are the, um in terms of practical steps the notices are the the biggest thing the notice of liability and then having the ability to actually use those tools so Olga and I last meeting had, uh, she had shared some notices of liability that parents and youth would be able to use um, to be able to sh share with the ones that are part of this scheme that are going to be held personally liable even and ensure that you're, Olga, you're muted right now. To say I, as a parent, do not consent my child to be vaccinated without my presence. Some parents want their children vaccinated. Still, parents to be there with the child younger than the age of consent. I think it's largely also around the need to actually feel empowered enough to take to, to take a stand because um, you know, I, I got a text message from someone that wasn't going to get it. And, you know, we've all had the experience of knowing people that were not going to get it. And then I got the text message to say, yeah, I got it. But only because everybody looks at you and like they're scared of you if you don't have it. And um, so really needing to have a strong will is the biggest piece of this whole process and, and how do we strengthen our will and it's really by feeling the feelings, I believe. It's by being willing to actually feel through when you are feeling overwhelmed, when you are feeling frustrated or feeling like it's all too much or feeling anger to actually feel those feelings instead of pushing those down because if we push those emotions down, then ultimately we're going to have all of the momentums behind that emotion that is energy and motion we've suppressed from all of the other times we've done it that then show up in the moment we're triggered that are needing to have resolution, which is why they're showing up even bigger, louder in that moment. Dwayne, yes? I would like to say that um, your, your, your strength comes from knowing. And once you know that you are doing what is truthful and what is rightful, then you know what I'm saying, should nothing else stand in your way because you you are all righteous. And you know what I'm saying, you know that every word that comes out your mouth should be, you know, go. So you should nothing help stop you, you know, just go. <laughs> That's what I do. Don't let that stop you. I go with what I know. Yeah. So, and, and so knowing that and then feeling into where we actually know that because it's like, Erica, and I, I don't mean to take away from all the information you shared, but right now, you know that and, and you own that. But right now, when it's just information, it's like with, with the kids, as Bergie's saying, the kids are caught between a rock and a hard place, like pinballs in a machine. And a lot of teen kids 
want it themselves despite their parents being against it. Many youth actually have a fatalistic and nihilistic view, absolutely, because the tribe has always been used to keep the individual in line and natural, uh, the, the, the natural progression is that we have the tribe we're born into or that we belong to and then we actually seek the tribe that we will create with our friends and the peer group, which is why there's the desire for belonging over top of what is actually best because we want to be in the cool kid the the cool club um and and so going against our own knowing that's part of how the tribe is used to manipulate deceive and get us to turn against what we know to be true and especially you know in a world where many parents are are too busy and, and wrapped up in their own emotions or in their work or in just the busyness of this world that we live in for them to be able to be present enough for the youth or the, the the young ones to feel like they have the space or to be important enough to actually self-advocate. And if they don't have it at home, then they are not going to have the confidence to be able to do it on the larger spec larger spectrum either. Now, now Laura, I do comprehend. So one of the first things in school is you get your books before you show up for class. So I gave you a few books um, that are really going to round out your library, no matter who you are. But the, one of the most important things is that I have perfected instruments uh, for family and friends that uh, allowed them to not get a Corona shot. Um, and I also want people to, to pose this to their group friends, because, you know, when I was a kid, I always said, man, imagine, imagine, you know, if people just had tattoos, that they had a, high cholesterol on their forehead and that they had herpes so that we don't have to go and buy them a drink and dance with them so we could just know who's got herpes and high cholesterol and we could just not associate with those people because in the future this is what we're looking at with corona 19 because you know if we're if we're going to get something on a nap or whatever to identify corona 19 i want to know if you, your family has cancer i want to know if you have herpes i want to know if you have aids i want to know if you have high cholesterol I want to know what color your eyes are. I want to know your criminal record. Where does it stop? It does not. And this is why we have privacy and HIPAA laws, because it can, it has to stop. It has to stop. And the, the society who says, I'm not doing anything wrong, therefore I've got nothing to hide, is not an informed society. This stuff is played out before. You know, in the 80s, when HIV and AIDS were coming on board, that's exactly what they tried to do to gay men, specifically, explicitly gay men, is that they would have to identify and wear a scarlet letter. And that is exactly what's happening again, because history repeats itself. It's but imagine, imagine if your phone app had to tell me all the people you had sex with under law. Yeah, uh, how's that? Cool. Well, because well, this is... This, this is perfected knowledge. This is private knowledge. And what you do with your doctor is what you do with your doctor. Does it have to say, I have herpes on your forehead? No. Do we all have to get tattoos? Is that my right? Or do I have a right to engage you in conversation in private? And then if we get to that point, ask you about your sexual orientation, ask you about your sexual you know, prowessness, ask you about your family genetic history, ask you, Absolutely. ask you about a political stance. These things we should not wear on our sleeves because, you know, it's what the melanated people have gone through. The Irish people is because you can pick them out in a crowd. Okay, David, like, I, have yeah. a, I have a question along the statement you just made and many questions sure. you asked. And uh, I will add one more question to you. To whom these questions are being asked or who do we ask that to change? Where, how, to whom? That's a great question. So the first thing is command the step. The first step and the first step is who you can reach. Who you can reach is your friends and family and pose to them these questions that if we're gonna move forward in a society, is it so, okay that that what you're saying, that, we need assembly and we need a protest. To whom? Well, hold, who hold on, is protest. going to give me those 
answers. Who is going to change those rules? Okay. Who for me? Who? Yep. Yep. So in my class, Incite Your Authority, um, I'm working on the perfection of language with everybody so that we can write our laws. We can write our own laws, guys. Who will and, accept my law? Who? Well, no, they when you have write to, it on the wheel. Everybody got to accept it. There you go. So there are, yep. So there are a couple ways that you can perfect within your sphere, within your reach, and it's your will uh, that you can perfect. A living will you can perfect. Uh, an estate you can perfect. So the first thing is start small, like this group. That's why I love to see the post. Um, and that's why I took you up on your offer to have a, a roundtable meeting is because you're it starts done, with done small. Great job. You, you have a lot of knowledge to share. That's all great. But I still don't know whether the authority over me today, the way it's set up, this setup, whether they have the right to ask, to, to hear my question. Me not as a person, me, as a woman, as a living being, not as the one registered in their bondage. With yes, so the, letters. Yep. Me, so now the, as a woman, yeah. we need letter. We need a being who has authority over me. Yeah. Who? So okay. So that's a great question. I have the yes. answer for you. So pull up, a, pull up a chair and a pen. Uh, the most, no, this is serious. The, this is a great question. I'm more and than not the first serious, person to but ask I'm it. smiling. Go ahead. Yeah. So the best, the best way to tell you this is that, um, is that we've got the adjudication in history has, has always favored your belief in God. And the principle of law is that you must be governed. And if God does not govern you by your proclamation, then a man will govern you. So people who want to call themselves atheists, they're going to have my hand over them or someone's hand over them. But when you start acting like God runs your life, when you start giving the fruit and showing the fruit of God running your life, when you stop aborting babies because you have a common law right to abort a baby, but when you stop and start acting equitably, then you can march forward in the same footpaths of equity. Now, I will let you know that I am pro-abortion rights because I'm pro-woman rights, as I'm pro-man rights, pro-black man rights, pro-mixed race, pro-everybody rights. I do not accept the fact of abortion. It is not what you need to do, but everyone should have dominion over themselves if they are run by a God. And listen, this gets really sketchy, but I will include the fallen angel in that because some people claim that that's their God. And under law, that is good enough by me because at least I know where to turn my barrel to, my attention to, and call out and, and bind that demon and bind that spirit in the Most High's name. Because once they declare, then you know who you're dealing with. Now you're on equal footing. So as you come out of, into this awakening, you'll realize that you are on a ship. You were born on a ship. It's sailing. Someone built it. It wasn't you, nor your mom, nor your dad. And they just didn't realize they had the power to free you. But you have been put into a trust to protect not only you, but per to protect me from you. My analogy is a four-year-old with a sharp knife. There's nothing worse than someone who doesn't know their rights, who wants them all. You want to carry a what? A gun and a knife? And you want to eat and talk on a cell phone and drive at the same time? Are you kidding me? You know, some things need to be balanced. And that's why the public trust, one of the reasons why the public trust was, was put together. And the main reason why is because when the founding fathers, no matter what founding fathers could be the queen, could be, you know, wherever you come from, they went to war and they set up a trust to protect the goods 
that that they are walking away from to go fight a war so that if they do return or if they don't return their heirs get to have a claim what they left to go fight that holy war or unholy war so this is a, a thing in history okay, that's been so far prevented. so far we're in agreement but right now today yes. if i disagree say for example with masks and if i organize a protest i am asking i'm asking for my rights those who fight over the, exactly that very trust that belongs to us to yeah. humanity yeah. so what so first of all I, eric, i'm just i'm just going to say eric we need to actually be claiming our rights first and foremost so yes you know, the, Don't let anybody tell you that they're so holier or more womanly that they just don't have to. That's ridiculous. It it's crazy ridiculous. talk. And so there's that piece to it. But the problem that we're also facing here, as Bergie shared in the comments, is the fact that we have young people that are not four years old, they're 12 years old and they are able to make the decision to take the job themselves and their friends are doing it and so there's a level of peer pressure that as much as we can have the information about advocating for our rights here the problem is that if we don't actually create a safe space for the young ones to be able to see that we're doing what needs to happen they're not going to get on board and they're going to make the decision to taint their system and be corrupted and then there will not be the future generations and so the the meeting i'm just going to say we're, we're coming up to the hour and a half uh time frame and so that was as that was the set time for this meeting specifically and we can have a meeting next time and as much as it's a great opportunity to bring law into it i feel like the best use of these meetings moving forward is going to be where we actually focus on how we integrate the power that we have with the tools that we have to create a notice to to figure out how we can actually equip the youth to make this safe. Because in, in truth, this meeting, while it was full of great information, I don't feel it's going to necessarily benefit others who weren't in the meeting because I got overwhelmed sitting in the meeting with the inundation with all the information. And I'm, I'm just, I'm honoring my feelings and I'm voicing my feelings because there are a lot of people that are so uncomfortable with their feelings that when the emotions show up and they don't know what to do with them and then they just feel the overwhelm and it doesn't feel safe they can't go there and if they don't feel safe enough to go there it doesn't help them and so figuring out how we can actually say it's very very nicely defined laura very nice thank you you're right but still it's well of information is not to be done in one day or one hour, but we need it is there. And I'm very grateful to David here for doing it. However, uh, about that notice, later I learned that actually it's a law in Ontario, 10 year and up, they don't have to ask parents. They can go on hormonal therapy. They can do whatever they want. And that law was, 2015 brought in that's what we are fighting now well and they've even got the bill the most recent bill that they've passed where if you try to have a conversation with your child about uh, the implications of this you could a parent could actually get locked up for five years for conversion therapy See? and See? once they make the decision then they aren't allowed to change back so there are ramifications that are happening right now that is a direct attack on not just our rights but on who we are and whose we are and so yes. 
figuring out a way to make the the most of these meetings, which I do very much appreciate the information that everyone brought forward today. And I just want to be able to make this a space where people can come without feeling overwhelmed because- You're doing very well. You're doing very well. No one, I don't think anyone is overwhelmed. This is what, in my opinion, if you people disagree, feel free because I disagree almost on everything. So go ahead, tell me what you do disagree. But I think what we need to do, we need to, again, to focus on this notice, how it's being done focus to distribute to as many parents as possible that they do submit that notice that we object a law. If a 10 year old is not the age of consent and no government can make that rule. And we are going back to what David was talking, uh, at birth, parents had given the children to state, I had given the children to state to be in control at birth. So there's many, many different issues and everything that was discussed here today is worth hearing, if nothing more. But there's, I learned over this period of time, like I've been quite a bit around distributing the notices, talking to people and so on. And after I've learned what you just what you just said, I thought, well, this is, could put me in trouble. That's not the right approach. What we are doing, we have to change the course of action a little bit. Today, I learned uh, about the notice. I'll, I'll I'll be reading more about it, and I would like to ask more people. Yeah. Um, so Olga, I'd can... like to I'd like to go uh, and give you a little more knowledge. So first of all, I don't use the word protest. And the reason why is because there are many cases that have already identified a protester as someone who has no citation of authority. Mm -hmm. And so I want to change the the new uh, the new word from protest into notice, where people are holding up written notice signs. Notice in all caps, black, bold. You got me? Because yes. it's about noticing the public noticing and if we start turning these into notice rallies yes. that they that the government or whoever it is is on notice and you know this is gonna be wildfire and just like i believe that site your authority is going to be wildfire because too many people are speaking and they don't have a legal position to have an opinion and you can't have a legal a position without a notice. Not, neither the knowledge. Or we the knowledge. Don't have the yeah. We don't have the legal knowledge. We need yeah. lawful knowledge. I, yeah, Laura is right. I used the word legal. She, re, she reminded me last time. She said, that, no, no, no legal. Use something else. What was the other word? Lawful. Lawful. Well, <laughs> you know, the, but the, well, that's just okay. not, th those, aren't, those aren't quite perfected. Here's why. We want legal notice, but we also for want, them. We want we want equitable. No, because equity follows law. Mm -hmm. Period. That is that is the law. Equity. There's no such thing as just equity, because it follows the law. So you want to give legal notice because once you once you've uh, once you've gone through every legal remedy, you can now receive an equitable remedy but you have to go through those steps the legal steps and how do you do that is by notice how do you do that by asserting yourself by by reserving your rights you know without prejudice key words you might want to write those down reserve rights without prejudice um some people say without recourse but Bergie is sharing in the uh, comments about Bill C-6 amends the criminal code to prohibit certain activities that relate to conversion therapy, which is defined as practices, treatment, or services de designed to change an individual sexual orientation to heterosexual or gender identity to side gender. 
or to reduce non-heterosexual sexual attraction or sexual behavior. Specifically, the bill would enact new offenses to prohibit causing an individual to undergo conversion therapy against their will, causing a child to undergo conversion therapy, removing a child from Canada to undergo conversion therapy abroad, receiving a financial or other material benefit from the provision of conversion therapy and advising, advertising to offer an, or advertising an offer to provide conversion therapy and the bill would authorize courts to order the seizure and forfeiture of advertisements for conversion therapy or order their removal from computer systems so take down provisions overall the bill would promote the human dignity and equality of all canadians and ultimately it's a huge it's it's part of a transhumanism agenda which is why our youth are so confused because they've been targeted since even before they came out of the womb and it's been a long time standing and so figuring out how to claim our rights by putting by using notices first and foremost and then understanding how to move forward from here so i don't know how helpful this was for everybody today but hopefully it was useful and um i want to honor everyone's time it's been an hour and a half of intensity so um would love for any if if there's a quick final uh final comment um from anybody that hasn't had an opportunity to um share something or um that would like to in in the final moment minutes of of today said my piece and uh, also there is uh, uh, a group as or I call it assembly assembly Canada discussion um, national slash common law anyone interested I can provide you with the link I think I have the emails most of you people or I can send it to Laura and yes Laura. If, if you would uh, email me Olga that would be wonderful because I I try to keep up, um, you know, with all with all God's people, you know, I I am motivated because uh, I feel like this is the right thing to do, and it's been way too long. I've waited my entire life for someone to do it, and I've been working extremely hard for the last twenty years so that I could do it, you know, with force and effect. Be, you know, and, and you know, if not if not join ranks, uh, lead the way, whatever it takes because what we're having today is not acceptable period and i'm here to change it and i'm here to do it with force and effect and i'm here to cite my authority and i'm here to hand them back their own laws and we need to stick together and i feel very blessed laura thank you for having me on and allowing me the time thank you for for coming and for contributing and to everyone for uh, participating in in the way that was best for you and so uh, would love to have your feedback on the meetup group or wherever it was that you found this meeting please do uh, shoot me a message and let me know um, how how we can best serve in ultimately creating a safe space where everyone does have an opportunity to uh, bring forward practical solutions that will help us be able to move forward in a way that is going to help us all uh, reach the youth and the ones who are being targeted and that uh, may not have found these meetings or see the value in attending them yet and yet that's what we're here for so I appreciate everyone and I wish you all a wonderful evening or whatever time it is where you are and uh, look forward to coming together. We'll gather again at 530 uh, next Thursday Eastern Standard Time again and uh, I'll post that meetup group on uh, or I'll, I'll post that event on meetup under Peaceful Inner Warriors United Group. Um, so please do uh, reserve your spot there just to let us know that you'll be coming. And if you do have questions or comments or um, contributions that you would like to make, if you could share those in that group and start the conversation ahead of time, uh, that would be uh, very beneficial. If you would like to leave your email address to make sure that you uh, stay abreast of what's going on, uh, you can post it into the chat box and would be glad to uh, keep you in touch. and. And uh, 
appreciate everyone for coming. And so uh, we'll just Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Olga. Absolutely. Thank you all. Yeah.